enforcement voting rights in a way that will appeal to the public, they would emphasize that women would be even better mothers and wives if they had the right to vote. And it felt for someone like Wilson, which was less progressive, less militant, more conservative way of advocating for women's rights. And as he sees more and more of these women in radical circles, that pressure increases. And then along comes the global and they front and center of their policy. The dirty little secret of war is that it's good for women. They are an essential part of the war effort. And so, war provided a nationalization of perceived responsibilities of the government. And Wilson realized he would really be behind the times if he did not eventually support women's suffrage. So, at the end of September of 1918, Wilson goes before the Senate asking for support for suffrage. Okay. He says he has asked so much of women during the war to support the war to take over the role of men. How can we deny them equality when the war is over? Despite President Wilson's support for women's voting rights in 1918, the vote actually failed. And it takes another year and a half for the United States Senate to vote two thirds in favor of a constitutional amendment. And by 1920, the Senate passes the 19th Amendment. And Wilson begins claiming that it was one of the great victories of his administration. He sees this as a tangible piece of progress. And that does reflect political shift and a personal shift. Presidents are complex, and they don't always lead with the kind of moral courage we would envision a lot of them. Yet sometimes, with the right pressure from the people, they come about and do the right thing.
ได้ได้ได้ได้ได้ได้ได้ได้ได้ได้ได้ได้ได้ได้ได้ได้ได้ได้ได้